What's up guys back with another video and I'm here to talk about <clears throat> excuse me here to talk about a very unpopular opinion the Neil Saban era now when when Saban bought the project back from bought Power Rangers back from Disney it, it, it got a lot more popular and you know it started to um this the fans started to the fandom started to get back to where it was however out of the, all of the errors it, it it is possibly the worst error out of all of them and my i'm going to do a composing list of the ups and downs of the neil saban era and it's two ups and eight downs of the neil saban era because i mean like i said like i said one well one of the huge mistakes is not working out a deal with Nickelodeon for 40 episodes as opposed to 20. Uh, that's, I don't know why Nickelodeon does that. The, the only pause, one of the good things about have, having it on the Disney network was you got more than 20. I mean, you don't have to wait for like five months for a new episode. But I'm going to hop right into it. Let's begin with the downs. And number eight, the theme music. Now, at first, it made sense to why they, like, remixed or revamped the Go-Go theme when they started Samurai. Just, uh, you know, just, um, just to bring in older fans back to the newer to the newer seasons but i mean my god using it every single season was just annoying especially the roll call gia troy orion i mean that got really annoying i mean i i damn near mute the theme every time i hear it because i don't want to hear the roll call and just because you the the good thing about the Disney era and the original Saban era is that each season was different and that each season had its own theme song and Ron Washington Washington I'm not sure if I'm announcing his name right but he's one of the best composers ever and he wrote one of the best theme songs for Power Rangers he did light speed. He, I, I think he did zero through time force. Um, he did SPD. He was gonna do Mystic Force, but that didn't happen. But yeah, that was a big mistake. Just the theme songs. Number seven, unnecessary side characters. Uh, okay, now I, you all know what I'm gonna say. Okay, Balkan Spike. Like I said, they only did that to bring in older fans and uh, they're not it doesn't work when you try to rehash something with someone else with um, someone else the Balkan Spike didn't work Balkan Skull the way funnier uh, on camera and off camera and and the what the two guys names and ninja steel they just weren't funny at all they were just cringy uh victor and um monty or whatever the hell their names were they were just terrible and n nobody cared about them honestly uh they just do those side characters to just fill in time for the episode um, but on to the next one, number six, the, the Red Rangers, the Red Rangers in the Neo Savant era were very bland and boring. Um, Jaden, he was, and he was okay, I guess, but most of that stuff was just copied from the Sentai. 
withstood it a lot better. Um, but Troy, uh, Troy, and uh, what's his name? The the Red Ranger from Ninja Steel, Brody were very boring. They were, they didn't have no personality. It was just they weren't even entertaining Red Rangers at all. And Brody, it just felt like they just copy and pasted his personality from um, Troy from Mega Force. He he was just a boring Red Ranger. He didn't even feel like a leader. And his backstory of him being a, um, of him being taken out of space and little aliens and stuff, it had a lot of potential, but it went nowhere. Uh, the Red Ranger from Dino Charge, um, Tyler, he was the only interesting Red Ranger in the whole era of Neil Saban. So, yeah, number six, the Red Rangers. Number five, everything about Megaforce and Super Megaforce. Now, Jonathan's Accord is possibly one of the worst things that ever happened to Power Rangers. He is literally poisoned. If you were on his season, there are chances are nine times out of ten fans will hate your season. And even the Megaforce cast says that they were unhappy about their season. And you know that's a problem when the Rangers dislike their own season. And... Cameron Drebo even said that one of the things he didn't like was that he wasn't there for half, that Orion was barely there. And uh, a lot of the Rangers didn't really have a personality. The actors that play them, if you see them watch their stuff at conventions, like their panels at conventions, they have more personality than their characters do. Especially... Uh, uh, Andrew Gray, he's a lot more entertaining in real life than his character is, because his character is boring. It just, when I look at Troy, it just feels like he's, um, it just doesn't feel like, um, what am I trying to say? It just feels like he's reading lines. It doesn't really feel like he's trying to put effort into anything he says or does, but, uh, unfortunately, if unfortunately they were, they had it rough because they are gonna go down as one of the worst seasons in Power Ranger history. Thanks to Jonathan. Um, number four, there's a simple explanation, and I'm pretty sure you all know what that means. That means nothing ever gets explained in Megaforce or Super Megaforce. In Super Megaforce, when um, Jay asks, go say one of the worst mentors in Power Ranger history, when he asked him why he went from black to green, he, he told him there's a simple explanation for that. And then the alarm went off. We never got an explanation. But the real explanation is that they just changed uh, Super Sentai seasons. That's pretty much the only reason why they did that. Um, but th there's a lot of other stuff they didn't explain either, but that's just the gist of it. Um, number three, the Dino Supercharge Finale. Now, this one made no sense. Uh, Dino Charge, great season. The second season started off great. It went downhill after that, and the the finale was it. That that ruined possibly everything. Not only for me, but a lot of other Power Ranger fans as well. It was confusing and didn't make sense. And at the end of it, we were just thinking, wait a minute. Does that mean Dino Thunder never happened? Does that mean Mighty Morphin never happened? It just take place in a different dimension. It's a good thing that they explained it in uh, Ninja Steel because in Ninja Steel it was confirmed that it takes place in a separate dimension than the other two, than the main dimension, the RPM dimension, because in Dino Charge you never hear them uh, referring to Power Rangers because Power Rangers don't exist in that dimension. But... Yeah, that's possibly one of the worst um, 
Power Ranger season finales. If I were to make a list, this would probably be number one on, actually number two on the list. Um, speaking of number two, number two, Class of the Red Rangers. Okay, this was complete trash. I saw the, I saw the Sentai counterpart for this team. It, it, it is a thousand times better than this. I, I would suggest you guys watch the counterpart team up, Go Under and Sinkinger over Samurai and RPM. This team up was lazy. The only reason Ika wasn't Ika Darvo who played the Red RPM Ranger, the only reason he wasn't there in this team up is because Power Rangers is non union and he after he after his season ended, he became a union actor. He joined the SAG. And you can't do non-union products without getting paid the same amount of money that you're currently getting paid in SAG. So, and, and Saban didn't want to make the show union. And let's be honest, that's just lazy. All you have to do is sign a few pieces of paper and he would have been able to do the team up episode. But unfortunately, he couldn't do that. He had to record his voice and, um, he had to work record his voice and they used it in the episode and he had to go under another name because of union issues and he came his character Scott he seemed more like a in this team up he seemed more came across as a dick more than anything and the whole the one thing that was confusing was I'm scared that he couldn't de he couldn't de morph because he didn't know if he could breathe the air but that in the episode RPM when he goes outside the dome he was unmorphed and breathed the air and he was perfectly fine. Same with Gemma in D Dimensions in Danger. So yeah, that was just stupid writing on their part and that was just laziness on Saban's part not just making the show union and treating the actors with with more respect than they should be treated. And number one, the number one down for the Neo Saban era is the legendary battle. Oh my god, dude, dude this was the worst team up in Power Ranger history. It was all lit they hyped it up all season just for nothing to happen. And even uh, Cameron Jibo uh, said that he was upset that J.C. David Frank posted all those pictures on online before the team up happened, and and it went nowhere. We got no explanations to how some of those Rangers got their powers back or anything like that, and a lot of the a lot of the Rangers that were asked to come back, um, that didn't. A lot of the Rangers that were asked to come back declined, or they couldn't make it for some reasons. Like, um, for example, the paint, the original paint ranger from um, Lost Galaxy, if she she said that if she would have gotten the heads up ahead of time, she would have made it. She got another episode. Um, David Yost declined just because basically he said he was tired of abusive relationships because how he was treated in the past. And um, the Pink Overdrive Ranger, she said she didn't get the invite, but she would have had her director change her uh, schedule for her like TV show or movie or something just so she could film it. That's how she, mo that's how much she loves Power Rangers. And let's see, there are a lot of other, um, I don't think they asked any of the Disney, Disney Rangers to come back. Um, let's see. Uh, but yeah, it was just very disappointing. Th this is all we got. Help me all. Helmet on. We didn't even get a morph. We didn't get unmorphed fight scenes. If I would have rewrited it, this would have been a two or three part finale. 
and Rhett Fisher from Lightspeed Rescue, he got he got invited to to the legendary battle, and he said yes, and he was gonna come over, but they uninvited him due to budget cuts. So that sucks because I really wanted to see him because he's one of my favorite six rangers. Aside from the aside from the 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 cameos, there's no no good thing about this se- about not only the season but the the team up. And because of this, that's why Jonathan Zakor no longer works on Power Rangers. He got fired because not only of this episode but of this season. I imagine it's because of the hate that he got from the fans because of it. And all the hype Surrounding it led to nothing. You want to see a real, a real battle? Watch the team up in, in, uh, what's it called? Go back and watch forever, and, and that that's a lot better than this. Now on to the two ups. Uh, number two. Dino Charge, the first season. Now, Dino Charge was a breath of fresh air. I'll, originally, I was not going to watch this season because the past four seasons were disappointments. And I was just like, ugh, God, why would I want to watch another awful season again? But when I heard Chip was coming back, I was excited. And I saw that they, they put the first episode up on Nickelodeon. And I watched it on Nickelodeon, Nickelodeon.com, and I was impressed. I was like, okay, this looks pretty good so far. And then further on into the season, as they started showing more episodes, I was like, okay, this show is actually pretty good. It wipes out all the previous four seasons that came before it. And yeah, Dino Charge is a pretty great season. And finally, number one for the ups is Dimension in Danger. Now, this team up is one of the best team ups that we've gotten since, one of the best or decent team ups that we've gotten since SPD and Dino Thunder. And because previous, those previous team ups were not good at all. Um, some people might say once a ranger, but I don't really, um, unlike a lot of people, I don't hate that team up. I do enjoy it, but I do think there should have been a better explanation for the rangers just up and quitting and giving up their powers. They should have just stayed and fight without their powers, but whatever, you go can't go back and change by time, but... Dimensions in Danger is like one of the only two episodes I like of Super Ninja Steel. Actually, the of the entire Ninja Steel season, because that season, those seasons were just terrible. That when I look at those seasons, I'm like, this is not Chip Lynn at all. And what and what made it worse was um, I, what made it worse is what he said at the panel. About, um, I can't remember what he said. Oh, oh, Power Rangers lost its ways or something like that. But I think this team up should have been longer. And we should have, it should have been longer and we should have got a more call. And they should have focused on the other Rangers instead of it, instead of it being a Tommy show again. But Hey, what are you gonna do? I mean, it's better than it's better than what we got from the legendary battle. This is more of a legendary battle than 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 what we got in Super Mega Force. So, yeah, I enjoyed it. So those are my ups and downs from the Nielsen Bar Hour. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, what are your ups? And, what are your downs? Uh, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.